choices of treatment planning and options and uh, what I'm going to present today is what I do as a, as a prosthodontist who is trained uh, with implant surgery. So all what you see these uh, pictures, surgeries, are prosthodontics is all uh, my work and it was not changed. What we like to do basically is whenever we think of an anterior implant thesis is repeated predictability and repeated excellence. And what we, we want to be able to do is no matter what we do, where it is, we will be able to get the same result over and over again predictably for all our patients. So we don't have to sit down and differentiate if we have a teacher or a model or a president of state or anything. Everybody should be able to get the same results over and over again. Now we all know about the, you know, like what we look for and what not to look for and what's what's good and what's not when we're looking at immediate implant placements and we have the, you know, the usual suspect, the thin and scallops and what that will entitle to as, as, a, as, a, uh, uh, as a biotype. And, and we also have the, uh, 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 you know, the thick and flat which is more forgiving just because you know, the bone architect around the, the sites is a little bit more, uh, allow us to do uh, more and get a better result. Uh, we also know about the high smile line where we have to place an implant and there sometimes it's, uh, uh, it's very demanding and that it's the lowest my line is a little bit more forgiving. But for all intent and purposes of what we what I'm trying to do and I'm trying to do in the practice, I think this is by far the most dangerous uh, thing and that is to raise a flat when you are working in the anterior area. So the concept start to finish will work on trying to work as much as possible by gathering as much information beforehand so you can avoid to do a flap and try to do everything without uh, uh, raising the flap. So just simplify things because I'm just going to keep this presentation as clinical as possible. It's basically, as long as we have an apical bone uh, 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 beyond the, the apices of the roots, if we can place an implant and get primary stability, we're doing an immediate placement and immediate growth. As long as there is no need for soft tissue augmentation, we're, we're doing immediate. If there is a need for a little bit of grafting, then we'll cover that uh, 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 then we'll be able to do it also without a flap. And this is basically, you just need to have the right armamentarium to work with. And if there is, if there is one thing that I love to, to look and, 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 and it helps me a lot is understanding the biology of the extraction socket. If you can be able to understand this, keep that in mind, it will help tremendously in whatever you want to do. Remember that when you try to take a tooth out, atraumatically of course, with no raising of flap. The, the bone on the palatal always stay there. This is with time. You know, it's filled with you know, your blood clots and all your, your good fibers. And, uh, uh, and then with time, even if you do as much uh, work and attention to details, you will still lose this few millimeters of your mid buccal area. And that is the critical area right here. You see the palate will always stay there, the, the buckle will resolve. So even if you have a thick bone, you will, you will lose a little bit of it. With the thick bone, this area can be supported by your <coughs> pieces, you know, like the abutments will be able to help it. But if you don't, you have to figure out a way to keep this area uh, 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 out. And that's what we will, will cover. If you have a bone loss up to, you know, all the way down, you can still be able to do it flapless, knowing uh, uh, that you can be able to do some bone grafting with, uh, 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 with the procedures. Also, you have to remember that what you have to do when you're doing uh, immediate is different. 
and you have to have a different implants that will provide a better uh, uh, primary stability as we go along. So, uh, this is a typical case. This is unfortunately <coughs> a post orthodontic uh, where this patient was referred to us for four extractions of the anterior. We decided to keep two as a vital contact basically and work around taking out two teeth. You'll see the resorption uh, uh, there. This is a thick tissue. Basically, we'll take the tooth out, implant goes in right to the uh, uh, palatal, impression done at the same time, no flap. Uh, uh, again, you'll see that there is no trauma on the soft tissue. Immediate temporizations, you'll see the teeth are out of contact. And then with this one, we try to keep the, the provisional a little bit uh, concave so the blood clot will be able to fill and you have more uh, tissue. Tissue maturations in, uh, in, in two weeks and then you know, this is your implant. And then in, in the laboratory, we go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we used to make an old ceramic abutments and make our, our ceramic crowns. But as you can see right here, all this darkness is basically, uh, uh, the titanium gets on your uh, zirconia abutments. So uh, uh, when you place this on the young patients with time, you worry that the internal connection will start to loosen up a little bit. So we are replacing this with titanium inserts and then whether zirconia or an Emax uh, uh, cemented to it. We don't know if, if, if pressing directly to titanium is a good idea. So Batman goes in. This is just to show you even a probe uh, uh, around, around this will leave a mark and that's what will happen with your implant. Uh, uh, Batman goes in, final restoration in, in, in three months. So. Extraction, no flap, immediate implant placement, temporizations, immediate load. Well, you know, we will go from, from point A to point B. Before, implant placements to the single limb rest always. And then we didn't have to do anything to fill this area. This is, will be supported by our uh, uh, custom abutments. Now, Let's look at this case. This is this is a lady who's who's going to have this you know this tooth removed, a little bit of uh, 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 you know periodontal defects and a lot of mobility. We still will be able to do this by taking a tooth out, cleaning the area. You will see a little bit of the deficiency right here. Implant goes in, nicely torqued. Anything above 45 root centimeters get to be uh, uh, immediately loaded. We'll look at the implants and we'll look at the gap right here. No flap, you'll see how nice the extraction is done. Uh, this is another thing that we're doing is we're trying to make the custom abutments ahead of time so there is no a lot of removal and insertions. This is one time deal. Uh, with time you can develop uh, a lot of uh, uh, these abutments and leave them uh, next to you. Uh, you can take them out, put them in, or you can do you know, your surgery on the model basically. For these uh, purposes, we go ahead and make the provisional, realign it, get it ready to go, and then we'll perform our regenerative uh, procedures. Tunnel it, where you can go ahead and place it around. Uh, uh, you put your bone graft, you pack it in, and then, you know, this is how it looks like cleaned after. You get your provisional, and you cement it in, and you wait for, uh, uh, you wait for proper healing. And when you remove it, this is for a different case, but this is what I want you to see is the bone graft material will get incorporated within the, the soft tissue. This will stay and it will help keep the soft tissue uh, and uh, maintain the thickness for a long period of time and the body will be able to uh, regenerate around it and uh, with time it will, um, may or may not disappear, but it will help keep the soft tissue uh, uh, up. And this is, you know, before, during, and uh, uh, with the cementation. Again, there's a lot of different things out there. You just pick, pick whatever works for you. The because we're doing because we're doing uh, 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 flapless, that will help you uh, when you are doing also multiple implant placements. So when we have to do two implant placements, here there is a little defect and a little bit of bone loss on the buckle. We do the same thing: extraction, no flap, implant goes in, the same regenerative procedure, uh, uh, and then you wait for you know the healing. Of weeks later, you know, all the bone grafting is incorporated within, uh, and even if you see some bone grafting materials on the side, it's all right. 
This is a this is a different kind of custom abutments. This is a uh, porcelain fused to uh, uh, metal uh, UCLA, uh, just because the implant position will leave this if you were doing it with zirconia or with impress uh, a little bit thin, and uh, you, know, you go ahead and you do your uh, uh, your final restoration. Same concept with four implant placement. Four teeth will need to come out exactly for the same reason, but these are thin. Uh, uh, biotype, but we were able to do regenerative procedures on each one of them individually. And again, when you look on the inside, you'll see you know the remnants of the, the bone graft incorporated within your soft tissue. And you go in, and it's just another day in the office, basically. It's just you know you make your impressions and you keep moving, and the results always uh, uh, maintain itself as a. Uh, so, I mean, if, if you have to go ahead and look at this right now, you already know what I'm going to do. This tooth needs to come out. You know, the soft tissue biotype is, is, is good enough. Tissue come out, and tooth come out. Implant go in, provisional. You wait a few months. You get back and your, you know, your custom abutments is there. You insert it. You put your final crown. I mean, I mean, you get you get a uh, you get your result. This is a crown, natural tooth implant, uh, and then you know every time a patient's come in, you know we were talking about repetitive excellence. This is what you want to be able to do to provide to your patients. Tooth come out, implant go in. This is thin tissue. It's gonna have some some you know form of membranes and bone graft. Provisional go in. Wait for healing. The custom abutment comes into place, push just a little bit on the uh, on the graft. Remember, this is all taken care of with impressions done in the same day of surgery. Uh, minimum amount of replacement. This, what we want to do with time, is to have this ready, to have it delivered at the day of surgery. So tooth come out, implant go in, final abutment go in, provisionalization, and then when when the proper healing comes to place you'll be able to, uh, 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 to deliver repeated excellence time and time again. So, uh, uh, what a pro. With, uh, with that in mind, <laughs> I'll leave the floor for any questions. Any questions from the audience? Um, uh, thank you for the good presentation. Uh, for the max, uh, for the max, there are anterior teeth like a thick biotype. Uh, you can do the like a uh, uh, left the surgery. However, like how do you handle thin biotype? Well, the thing, the thing, no matter what you're gonna do, if you're gonna do a flapless or not, you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of bone with it. So automatically, when we do thin, yeah. we augment the surgery with. You know, the use of, of uh, membranes and bone graft. Okay, so, uh, so even though that you will see that there is bone there, that bone is going to be gone. Yeah. Or and also, like uh, I found that the many thin bowel type patients actually buckle bone is kind of like two thirds mm -hmm. left. So it's no, usually, no, no it's usually, it's there. usually, it's not there, and it is. You know, you have. This is one of the area where you don't want to go in and do these kind of things on your first 20 or 30 implants. I mean, this is after you've done a lot of implants and you're comfortable with the immediate uh, implant protocol, you know, then that's what you want to do. Uh, but you still can do an immediate placement, but you have to augment it with regenerative procedure. You can do that simultaneously, or you can do a stage approach where you take the tooth out, do your grafting, and come back later and do your implant surgery. Is which we're trying to use the biologic system to help us. Okay. So then how do you handle the, for the mandible anterior tooth missing? You have to do the same thing basically, but you use smaller <coughs> implants. You, you know, use smaller implants and uh, uh, you know, use whatever protocols you can have, either a CT scan or any form, just to see how much, how much bone you have before you go in. I feel like <coughs> the mandible is more less predictable because whatever you do always after bone grafting, so it's like just the buckle bone is gone. I mean, as long if you have any questions or any any ideas, try to create one medical at a time. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing it stage wise. You know, where you take it to tooth, wait for it to heal, and then come back and do the implants there.
Very good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And if there's any other questions, we could uh, maybe have you go to the hall and carry on there. <coughs> Roddy? Hello, everyone. I'm Roddy Mastry. I'm the chair of the ACPU Research Committee. And this will be the sharing.